Hi, this is Vonna Pfeiffer, the Twisted Stitcher, and today I'm going to walk you through how I do wool applique the Maggie Boname way and sort of with a Vonna twist. Um, and I will tell you kind of how, what Maggie does and, and if I change anything about how I'm going to do it. But this is just going to be a basic instructional vic video on how you can approach wool applique. Now then, there are very different ways of having um, or doing wool applique projects. This way, Maggie's way, is a very organic way. Her patterns are very primitive and not so much finessed or um, a lot of additions in the way of embroidery stitches or fancy threads. So this is really a good way for a beginner to kind of dip their feet into uh, wool applique. So this is a mixed fabric applique pattern. This is an exclusive through Blackberry Primitives. I got my kit through Blackberry Primitives and you can go to blackberryprimitives.com and get your own kit and your own pattern to do this very same piece, okay? So what does it mean by mixed fabric applique? It means that you have hand dyed wool pieces, such as these. These are all our hand dyed wools. Beautiful primitive colors, the way Maggie does her pieces. And then you have some cotton fabric. This is just 100% quilting cotton fabrics that we will be cutting and turning and putting on our project background. This is linen. And for those of you who cross stitch, it's very similar in feel and texture to linen that we cross stitch on. Um, that's what the background is primarily made of on our piece. And then this is the backing, okay? So I'm gonna put these all back. Notice that they are, they tell you what the pattern or the color is on each of these pieces so that you know what you're doing, which is very nice. A very nice way to kit. Thank you, Blackberry Primitives. Here is Maggie's pattern. And this is, like I said, an exclusive right now. Um, it is called Home and Garden. And she did this in 2020. Uh, of course, this is 2021. So when we cut our pieces, we'll be doing 2020. 21 rather than 2020. What I like about Maggie's pieces is that she always has her initials on her pieces and encourages you, you to do that as well. And I like that. As a cross stitcher, I sign my cross stitch pieces. And when I wool applique, I like to sign my wool applique pieces as well. So Maggie's patterns are handwritten and hand drawn. And there's a lot of information in a very short amount of pages. So what I suggest doing very first is reading the pattern from front to back. Um, I've read it already, and so I have a general idea of where we're going, and that's what you need to, to do yourself. Now then, a few words on what you need to do at Wool Applique. Maggie only uses two threads. Really, she only uses one thread. This is um, Coates and Clark, and I get the all-purpose, which is a polyester thread. Um, there's not much showing, so it doesn't really matter. Now, some people would say, oh, no, no, get the cotton thread. I don't, I, I don't care what you get, and I don't think Maggie cares what you get. She uses Summer Brown. This is the color Summer Brown. You can find this at Joann's, Michael's, um, just make sure that you get the summer brown. It, she says that this blends on her pieces with everything. Um, the only time that she changes from summer brown, using summer brown for her whip or applique stitches, is um, she says to get ecru and have it on hand in case you have a white on white set of wool and you might need that to blend better than what the on a white or ecru pleat ecru color piece of wool um, than the than the brown, the summer brown. So ecru, and then again, it's Coates and Clark's. I get all purpose, um, all purpose XP, which is a polyester thread. Maggie gets the one that is the blue and gold 
on the end. That's what I've seen her stitch with before, which essentially is the same. It's a polyester thread too. I just prefer the XP brand. And um, there you go, dual duty Colts and Clark. So Summer Brown and Ecru. These are the two threads that you need to have on hand. This is what she does all of her stitches with no matter what the project is. Now then, like I said before, she does not do a lot of embellishment as in hand embroidery on the piece, on her pieces. Like I said, they're very primitive and they really work up pretty quick, really. Okay, so besides your thread, what else do you need? I will have some applique glue. This is Sue Daly's applique glue. You don't need, I mean, this is a, you know, a small bottle. You don't need a lot if you use applique glue, just a couple of dots to get it tacked down before you stitch. If you like to use glue, this is a wash away glue. If you like to use it, this is an excellent, an excellent glue, okay? You'll need some freezer paper. Let me get this for you. I get the big guy. You can get this in the Reynolds wrap aisle. They used to wrap meat with it. You'll need freezer paper to cut and trace your shapes. And you will need some good scissors. Very, I have a curved tip scissors. That's for when I'm cutting my threads, snipping my threads, curve. These are Kai scissors. Kai are, are exceptionally good scissors. Um, Well-made, very nice, very sharp. These are, are uh, Sue Buckley, no, Karen Buckley. Karen Buckley scissors. Um, this one has a, a little bit of a micro serrated edge, so in a very fine point tip and it gets right up there in the corners when and makes a nice cut as you're cutting your your wool and then this is just a teeny tiny pair micro edge serrated pair and I have this because they're fine and I can get down into corners so uh, a good embroidery scissors a small good set of embroidery scissors would also work as well but you'll need some nice scissors to cut and make clean edges on your wool so a variety of, of good scissors i also have um you know like rotary cutters and all that because i'm a quilter that's not necessary but it is kind of nice to have those if you have them have them available in your in your work area Another thing that you'll need is either a window or a light box. I have a Lori Holt Easy Trace. It is a huge 18 inch by 12 inch light box. I use this for a variety of things in my craft room or in my cave because we're in our in my cave. Um, so either you need to trace your projects on a light box or you may use a window as well, okay? With that being said, the next thing that we need to do after we have all of our stuff around us and ready to work with, we need to go through, again, go through the pattern step by step, okay? So she has this drawn and this is how your final project will look right here. She has like, this is our base plan. This is our reference photo to where we can see where everything goes. And she says, to begin with, you will have to prepare the background. There are two linens are joined. You may just overlap and stitch together the seam will be covered by the textured gray strip of wool, which is one by 16. So the very first thing, and I always write with the number what the very first thing is. And the very first thing is that we are going to join our linens together, okay? And I write a one there. So we're gonna join our linens together. The linen, are these two gray pieces of linen right here. So we're gonna join that together. I'm gonna to set my background to the side right now. Okay, so we're going to join our linens together. Now then, how are we gonna join these linens together? Because we have different, you know, length and widths here, width here. So you wanna make sure, and she says, be sure the background measures 16 by 28 wide. Okay, so here's something that I do just because 
I'm kind of uh, dimensionally challenged. So we, she doesn't have which side is 16 and which side is 28. So obviously this is gonna be 16 and this is gonna be 28. And I write that on my pattern so that when I'm looking at this, I know exactly what I'm gonna do. You can also see that this right here is the short linen. So that's gonna go this way, all right? And then here is the other linen, and it'll go like this, all right? Okay, so she says that you may just overlap them and sew down the side here. You can sew with your hands or you can sew with your sewing machine, whatever you wanna do. For me, it's quicker to sew with my sewing machine, so that's what I will do, but, um, you can just do a simple running stitch all the way down the side here, but be sure that it measures 16 by 28 wide. So we need to see what this measures. I'm just gonna use my board here and it measures 18. Yeah, it measures 18. So what we'll do is, I want to see how much this is. This measures 11, 11, around 11. And then this one measures 20. Twenty by six, probably eighteen. Again, yeah. So you've got about an inch overlap. What I would do is, or what I'm going to do is, is I'm just going to put these one on top of the other, about a scant half an inch. Okay. and I'm gonna sew them together. But before we sew anything, we have to iron these, okay? So I'm gonna take this and we're gonna iron. Let me get my mobile ironing set up here. Okay, so these have been, these have been folded, okay? So I'm going to use some Mary Ellen's Best Press. That's what's in here is Mary Ellen's Best Press. I'm just going to spray This puts a very fine mist out, so I'm not like soaking it. So I'm gonna spray. I always let that soak in a little bit. I've got it on my iron. I just use, everybody always asks me what kind of iron I use. I use a sunbeam, uh, some sunbeam iron. I don't feel like you have to have a big, fancy, expensive iron. Irons are irons. <laughs> And I just get the cheapest one I can get. And when it runs out, then I get a new one. Or when it burns out or whatever. So I've got steam going. I'm not pushing. I'm just kind of laying this around on this linen. Because since it's, since it's a loose weave, it will stretch. So I'm not pushing. I'm just laying. And you see how nice that Mary Ellen's Best Press gets out all of the wrinkles and fold lines. Okay. All right, so we have our first one. Now I'm gonna get our second one on here and I'm going to, again, use my Mary Ellen's Best Press, and I'm co concentrating on where the fold lines were, and then just kind of doing a general spray all over. I let it set a little bit, kind of let it soak in. Again with, with steam. Again, I am not pushing. I am just kind of holding it up 
and just letting it kind of slide across. If I see a stubborn, I will stop and let it steam there a minute and then I'll start moving again. All right. Okay, so we have these pressed. Now we are going to sew these together. Okay, so again, let's refer to our diagram. On our diagram, the short, the short piece, okay, this short piece is on the left-hand side. The longer piece is on the right-hand side, okay? So here's my short piece, and here's my long piece. Now, I met, remember we measured these, and to measure these, it said that, you know, you need it, again, referring to our thing, 16 by 28, okay? So we need the, we need the longest sides with, you know, the width of the piece, and then the 16 inches on the short side, okay? And since I measured them, we know that I can overlap this, because that's what the instruction says, overlap about an inch or a half an inch, whatever you're comfortable with. Okay, so this is a just a Creative Grids ruler and it's six by 24 inches. So I am just going to generally make sure that I have enough here of, of width. You wanna make sure that you have a long enough width. width. And I have 28, which is what it's supposed to be, okay? So, again, you want to just make sure, make sure, make sure, make sure that you have at least the width. I know that the, the height is good because we're at 19 inches. And then we want to make sure that the width is 20 four inches or 28 inches so this is 24 if I put my finger right there yeah it's 28 and I again I check about 30 times <laughs> to make sure and it is so it is 28 inches with this layout right here 28 inches inches wide and that's what Maggie wants us to, to do our piece with. So I'm going to pin this because it's just overlapping. And then we're going to put a one inch strip of wool. And the one inch strip of wool is, let's see, right here. And let's make sure that this will go. And it, and it sure will. There it is. That's how it will look because we're preparing our background. So let's pin this up. Okay, so we've got this pinned up. I'm going to take this to my sewing machine. Now remember, you can whip stitch it if you want to, or you can do a running stitch down, down the length of this if you want to. I'm for quickness, I am just going to go straight down with my, my sewing machine. I'm going to lengthen the stitch a little bit so it's not tight and, and buckles or puckers this. I'm going to probably lengthen the stitch to about 3 or a 3.5. So let me do that, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back. I have, like I said, sewn the two pieces together. You can see I used a, a pretty wide stitch. I put it on 3.5, it holds it fine. And of course, like it says in the instructions, we're gonna cover that with wool. But before we do anything, we need to make sure again that this is 16, 16, let me make sure here. 16 by 28, 16 by 28. That's what we're doing, 16 by 28. So how do you get this 16 by 28? First, we need to make sure, and I'm going to move all my irons here this is a huge quilters rotary rotary cutter rotary cutting mat self-healing and 
it is measuring right now 29 inches, okay? Let me move you over there so that you can see that. It's measuring right now 29 inches. So we need to cut that down to 28 inches, all right? So how I'll do that is, let me move this. I'm going to put this all up here. Make sure we're straight. Your linen is gonna be kind of floppy <laughs> because it's a woven. So you wanna make sure that everything, your bottom is straight here and it is. And let's make sure that it measures up. We're starting at zero here on the one edge and we are right at 29. This is where I will take my Creative Grids ruler. I'm going to met to place it on the 28 at the bottom and at the top. So it's lying on, right at the 28 here. And if you look up there, it's lying on the 28 up there, okay? Okay, so now I'm going to take my measure again make sure everything's all lined up nice and flat nice and straight everything's along the edge everything's all square and then i'm going to cut this off with my rotary cutter okay okay I need to change my blade, so before I move my ruler, I always check. All right, so we got it at 28, 28 wide, all right? Now, or 28 long, now we got to measure the top part here, the width to be 16. So I'm going to leave it right where it is, right? And we're going to measure up to 16, okay? So right here, right here is my 16, okay? We gotta make sure that it's right. So we're measuring it at 16. Let's check our pattern again. Always double check about 50 times before you cut anything. 16, 16. So we are going to go down to the 16. I'm checking, make sure why this is so the backing will fit. Be sure the background measures 16 by 28. Okay. <laughs> I'm a little compulsive when it comes to, or obsessive, I guess. 16 right there. 16. You want to make sure that you're not wonky at all. 16, 16, 16. Right there, okay. I'm following this edge over here. 16, okay. Okay, and then I'm gonna start my cut. All right, and then I'm gonna go down. I'm just gonna slide my ruler and I'm, I'm lining up with the 16 over on this edge. And I'm going to hold it and cut it. Okay. All right. So, there we go. We got our 16 by 28 inch piece of background fabric. Whew. So that's kind of the hardest part to start off is just to make sure that you have, you have your background the correct size. Okay, now then, we go back to our pattern. So we have joined the two linens, so I can put a check mark by that. It measures 16 and 28, I can put a check mark by that. Once you have stitched the wool strip, strip in place, okay, so that means number two is stitch the wool strip in place. So, 
Another thing on our pattern that I always like to check is on the back, she always has listed what she needs, what, what fabrics you need. And so we have a, a linen piece and um, then we have a textured willow gray and it covers the joined linen. Textured willow gray and it covers the the joined linen and there it is. Now then with wool, we don't have to worry about fraying or anything of that nature. It is fine. We don't have to worry about that. And she wants it one by 16. This is measuring about one and a half. So I'm going to trim up the edges so that it's straight just a little bit. I have, what do I have? This is measuring one and a half by 16 and a half. So I'm going to measure, I'm going to move this and you can see that it's a little wonky. We want it straight. So don't pull it, just lay it down. I'm going to do a quick, a quick little press to get this dimple out. Oh. Okay, now we're going to lay this on one side and it's measuring one and a half. So I'm going to just come in a little bit and I'm gonna trim that side, that first side so that it's straight. Okay. And now I'm going to flip it and I'm going to make sure that this, it is square and that I'm lined up with this new edge that I created and get it exactly one inch. Right there. Okay, one inch, got it. I'm not gonna worry about the length yet because um, we, I, I'll cut that off. You wanna play with it be, so, because as you sew wool, it's gonna kinda shrink up. So we will put this right here, fits perfectly, great. With just a little bit of overflow, but not bad. And you don't want to stretch it. You just want to place it on there. And then again, we're going to pin it. All right, so now that my wool strip is pinned to cover our seam, we are going to make a quilter's knot. So that is cross your thread on your needle, and this is just a plain, a sharps needle, and you wrap it around, hold it with your thumb, and you wrap it around however many times. I'm gonna wrap it several times just because this is a pretty thick wee, or a pretty loose weave our background and then you hold those wraps with your thumb with your thumb and you pull your needle all the way out and down the thread until you have a knot okay can you see that knot right there all right so then we're going to clip our end our tail and we are going to begin our whip stitch down the side of this wool and then we'll do it down the other side okay 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up. I'm going to come up right there. You can see I, I took a bite of wool, just a little bite, not a big one. And then I go down. And then I'm going to go about an eighth of an inch up. And I'm going to come up again. Maggie says that she doesn't really worry about how her stitches lay because you can see that the thread just go, you know blends right in. The summer brown blends right in. So I came up about an eighth of an inch from the other stitch into the wool. Now I'm going down right alongside the wool, going up about an eighth of an inch again. And pulling. Maggie says she doesn't worry about if her stitches are straight or if they're not straight because this wool, this thread, this summer brown, blends in with all her her wool, and so you can't even see it. You can't, and you really can't see it. So I'm going to continue this. I'll speed this up, and it'll just be me whip stitching this piece down, appliquing this wool down. Okay, so I've got it all down the side. Now then, you can see that these, you don't want any puckering. So you want your tension to be smooth and not real tight. You don't want to like yank it, yank it, yank it. as You, you just want to gently place your, your stitches along the edge. You really can't even see them because, like I said, Maggie chooses this thread because it blends in. Now, before I start down the other side to whip stitch this other side, this is not this thread length is not long enough to get down to the other side. So I'm going to go down through the end, back up. I want to tack this edge so that I don't lose that kind of along the edge. I'm just going to quickly whip stitch this around just to hold that edge. doesn't have to be perfect because this is going to be covered with our backing edge. And then end off. Okay. So I just made a, a, a circle. I went through the circle twice to make a knot and then I buried the knot by coming up, under, and back out the top. And then clip your thread.
you can see that my stitches aren't all that even. Remember, this is primitive. This is a primitive. It doesn't have to be just perfect. That's one good thing about a Maggie Bonami piece to start out on. They are primitive, so they're, you know, we're looking for a finished product, not a perfect, a perfect execution. But we try to make it as perfect as we can as we go. Okay, quilter's knot, end of your thread, plus sign over the needle, wrap it, and then hold it with your thumb and pull it all the way down to the end of your thread. There's your knot, clip the tail. Now we're gonna go from the end all the way to the other end on this one. Remember, you're gonna come from the back side into your wool, gently pull it, and then go down into your linen and back up through the wool, about a fourth to an eighth of an inch. Okay, once you get to the end, you can see that we have a little bit of over, over, uh, overage here on our wool. And so we're just gonna clip that flush with the edge and then do a couple whip stitches along the edge to tack that. And then end off. And that is just making a, a lasso or a circle with your thread going through it twice with your needle, pulling that thread tail with you and pulling tight. And since it's on the edge, we'll just, that's that, and clip it. There we are. We've got our background. Okay, so get our pattern again. And we can say that we attach the wool strip and put a check mark by that. Okay, so once you have stitched the wool strip in place, add the cotton patches overlapping as needed. Turn under the raw edges except along the outer edge. Be sure to add the scallops before stitching those, piece, those patches down. So now we're getting into the patches, which are these things, and um, cutting out our pieces. So, Let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and cut our pieces. That's the next thing. Our cotton pieces from our kit. Okay, I'm gonna lay them all out here. Okay, 
Now then, on the pattern, it has that you need a gray floral. And that's this one. You need a black geometric with lines. That's that one, of course. We need a black with light floral right here. And we need a lot, a light with kind of a dotted swirl. Okay. So these ones that all these others have multiple stick cuts so i always start with the one that's the easiest and this one needs to be eight inches by one and three fourths so it is eight inches and it is about a two so these pieces all include a fourth of an inch let me again read to make sure that that's right because i like to double check everything that i do use the measurements shown on the drawing for the patch size. It includes a fourth of an inch to turn under. So we have D, which is eight and one and three fourths. And that says eight by one and three fourths. Okay, so this includes a quarter of an inch for, for turn needle applique. I do not like turn needle applique. And turn needle applique essentially is when you put your I'm just going to, for demonstration purposes only, you need a long needle. Let me get one that's long and thin. You need a long, thin needle. So, like, this would be a milliner's, uh, like, 11 to 14 needle for turn needle applique. That's what Sue Daly uses. Okay, so... When you turn needle, if you're right-handed, you're going to work from the right to the left. If you're left-handed, you're going to work from the left to the right, okay? And many people get that messed up. But basically, turn needle applique is, is that as you sew, you're going to turn, use the side of your needle to turn it under a, you know, a quarter of an inch or however much, and then sew that down. And you're just going to sew and use a, a just basically a whip stitch. This is a primitive piece, and I don't think personally I want to go through and whip stitch or turn turn needle. If you use a um, heat and bond light, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to fuse my cotton pieces. And I use heat and bond light stretch, soft stretch. Um, you, this is sewable, so it stays. It's it stays soft. It doesn't get hard. Um, you can also use um, heat and bond featherweight. That's easy to sew through, hand sew through. This is easy to hand sew through, and it's also e you can machine it if you want to machine it. This is going to be an all hand sewn project, so I'm going to hand sew it and I'm going to use this heat and bond soft stretch light, okay? You can find this at Joann's. You're going to cut a piece that mat matches your cotton pieces, okay? So I'm just going to cut this right along the edge of my cotton pieces. is is that I will iron these on but first I'm just going to go ahead and get the get all the pieces lined with this fusible okay and then we'll iron them in a little bit so while I do that I'll speed this up
from fire hitting the pan as well, so I'm going to kind of pin it all along here to hold it flat before I start ironing. And there's two sides, of course, to the heating bond. This side is the rough side or the sticky side, and then this is um, what you can ride on, or, and once you fuse it, you'll pull that away and then fuse it down to our linen background. Okay, so then you just place your iron. I don't iron it. I want the steam off, so I want to dry iron, and you just, just let fuse to the cotton. And then you just go The pattern says to cut each of these cotton pack patches, and she has the the has has it listed. So this fabric D, which is the light dotted swirl, is supposed to be eight by one and three fourths. So I'm going to cut it in exactly what it says to be cut in. It's supposed to be one and three fourths by eight inches. So it is eight inches already, and I'm going to cut it down to one and three fourths let me check the yes one and three fourths and i'm going to use my rotary cutter let me clean up this edge so that it's straight And now we're going to cut it to one and three fourths. Okay. So this is our fabric D, and I'm going to write on since I fused this, I can write what this is, and I'm going to put D on there so I know. Okay, so the black with the light floral is next, and it's supposed to be ten and a half. By one and three fourths. Let me just generate this is it. So it's mine is measuring eleven by two. So I am going to cut each end because then that way you know that you got it. Since it's eleven, we we have an inch to work with. So ten and a half. I cut that in. Now I'm going to cut it to ten and a half here. So I evened up one end and then I can cut it down to 10 and a half. Okay, now <clears throat> I'm gonna cut one edge to make it straight using my bottom to line up flat or straight with. Got one size and now we're going to cut it to 10 and a half, one and three fourths. So again, measure up one and three fourths. Make sure we're straight, one and three fours. Hold your ruler and then cut along. All right, so this is fabric C 
and I'm going to write a C on the back so I know what that is. All right, the next one is our black geometric lines. This is fabric B. There's two pieces. We need four and a fourth by five and a half and two and a half by one and three fourths. So I want to measure what the dimensions of this is to know where I can get the best cut. So this is measuring eight by four and a half. <clears throat> So, I'm going to do a five and a half cut after I even up the end here, even it up just by taking a smidge, smidge, smidge off the end. And now I'm going to cut it five and a half. One, two, three, four, five. This is only a five, so I'm going to get my other one out and do a five and a half. From this edge that I evened up, this is a five and a half inch cut. And now I'm going to do four and a fourth the other way. So I'm going to even up this a little bit because we have some to work with. Now, from this edge, I'm going to do four and a fourth. So, this is fabric B1. And then this one has to be two and a half by one and three fourths. So two and a half by one and three fourths. So we're gonna go ahead and cut the one, the one and three fourths first. We'll just go from this straight edge right here, and then we'll even up the ends. That's one and three fourths. And now we need uh, two and a half. So let's even up one end here, and then we'll cut our two and a half. One and three fourths by two and a half. So this is fabric B2. Okay, now then we have our big gray pieces here. Take one of these because they're both the same size. And on our gray pieces, the very first piece we need is four and a fourth by 16. So let's measure. This is 21 inches long. So let's even up one end. Okay, now we're going to put this end against our mat or whatever you're using. And we're going to Go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and even up one edge of the long edge so that we know that we're getting a good cut with the edge that I evened up before. And now I'll try to even this up because we want straight cuts. All right, so now we're gonna cut it to 16. I'm going to follow this line so we know that we're getting a straight cut. And we need it 16. So I'm, I'm doing my 16 mark right down here is 16. Okay. 
All right, so 16. Let me measure it from this side, make sure I got it. 16, awesome. 16 and four and a fourth. Straight, 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 straight. It is four, one, two, three, four and a fourth. I moved it, so let's redo that. Okay, so this is fabric A1. Now we need four by one and three fourths. So let's first do, is this, is this four? Let's see, is this four? Oh yeah. So let's go ahead and cut this uh, four by one and three fourths. So three, one and three fourths. And then we need this measuring four. Okay, so that's, so that is B2, and I always, I'm checking this down here to make sure it's four, yes, and one and three-fourths, yes. Okay, next one is four by two and one-fourth, four by two and one fourth. So let's go ahead and cut a two and one fourth. And then a four. We got quite a bit of the gray left over. All right, I don't know if we use it again, but I don't think so. So here we go, we have the cotton patches. Oh, and I forgot to put on, this is A, A number three. A2, sorry. This was A1, this was A2, and this was A3. All right, so now that we have our patches, the next thing we do is we put the patches onto our background. But before that is said, there is a warning, because I remember, because I read through all of my instructions first, remember, so it says, be sure to add the scallops before stitching those patches down. So before we do anything else, let's cut our wool pieces. Okay, to cut our wool pieces, the first thing that we're gonna do is get a freezer paper. Got a piece of, of freezer paper. We're gonna get our tracing box. And we are going to trace our pieces. So the first one that we're gonna trace is this one. And we don't need our wool yet. We're just tracing. There's a shiny side to the, to the freezer paper and there's a doll side. We're going to trace on the doll side. Let me find 
find my pencil here. And we're just going to trace. I know you probably can't see that. It's so light, but we're just going to trace. Now then, I'm, I'm going to quickly say on this one, it has, you know, cut these right here. So you're going to cut the flowers and then the centers are from a different wool. So you're going to have to take that off your free, you know, take this and put it on another place and cut these and draw these centers because you can't cut the centers out of the flowers. And for the potted flowers, for the potted flowers, there's 14 petals. So you're going to have to draw 14 of these. Or you can use the same one over and over, but I like to just go ahead and draw them.
Okay, so I have all my pieces cut, and now you just kind of want to rough cut them. Um, rough cut them, and we'll place them on our wool, and we'll iron as we go here. So let me get my ironing board back up. Okay, so I have them loosely cut out. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut out our scallops. And that is one plum and raisin. So here's the plum and here's the raisin. So shiny side down. And just hold your iron on it. Okay, so we got these cut out, and I try to keep them kind of in order as I'm cutting them, and let me show you what I use to do that. Okay, so when I cut my pieces, after I cut them, I have these little file fo folders. I got them on Amazon. I use a, a wipe-off marker, an Expo marker, and I write on there so that I can keep my pieces together. They're just plastic file folders. Like I said, got them on Amazon. You can use an Expo marker and write exactly what each thing is that you're cutting, and then that way you have it all together. So, this first thing I'm going to write is my scallops. And I'm going to put all of my scallops in there. And as I'm putting them in there, I'm checking. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, great, I have three plums, which is correct, and I have four raisins. And there we are. So here's my scallops. I'm gonna put them in there, and then I'll go to my next thing. So these are an ingenious way to keep your things all straight. I'm going to continue to iron shiny side down of all of these pieces that I've cut out onto the appropriate wool as indicated 
by the pattern, okay? Once I get everything cut up, we'll come back and we'll put together, stylize, lay out our back our pieces on our background, all right? It's wool applique. It's just not hard, just a lot of attention to detail and just following directions. And Maggie has really great directions. You just have to go slowly and follow, follow exactly how it goes, okay? I will be back in a few minutes with all of my pieces cut.
All right, so we're back. I have my background laid out. I try to like always do my, my um, laying out with it on my quilting mat here, my rotary cutter self-healing quilting mat, and I try to have it blocked so it's right up against these edges so it's not wonky, that it stays pretty straight. So we have, uh, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to lay our cotton pieces down. Remember we have these all cut and we have our wool pieces cut and inside the file, plastic file folders that you can get on Amazon and then use a Sharpie marker to mark, wipe those off so that you know where all the pieces are or what all the pieces are and where they go. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to fold over these edges a quarter of an inch on the where it's gonna show so that I, I don't have to do turn needle. <laughs> I can just fold them over and iron. But the more I thought about it, I think that this is gonna be pretty okay just folding it over and fusing it. Now you wanna fuse, what I did was I pulled the backing off of this piece, but I don't wanna fuse it yet. I just wanna fuse the edges. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn this over a half of an inch, or a quarter of an inch. And you know, this is just kinda eyeing it. You don't wanna get the adhesive on your iron, so you're gonna just Use that freezer paper like that. That's gonna work really great. I'll turn off your steam. Excuse me. So there we go, we've got the side all turned over. That, that worked pretty good. Awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna put this back on the paper and we'll set this aside. <clears throat> and then let's see, we're gonna to refer to our, to our paper the next one that is this top one, and it is A, and it's the two and a fourth by a fourth. So again, this one is gonna be like this. This edge and this edge does not need to be turned under, but this one and this one does. So this time I'm gonna to try to do something a little bit different, just pull it down a little bit where I'll fuse it together. And get the paper off. Oh, wait a minute. 
it's not this edge, it's this edge. Sorry. Make sure you keep on looking at those. These directions are invaluable to make sure that you're doing the right thing. <clears throat> Right, we got that side fused awesome okay so there's our a that'll go up in the top left corner now then let's see we got one more a a2 where does that go that goes down here so it's going to be setting like this so we need to fuse this we need to turn back this corner and this corner because it's right there okay so we got the long part now we need this side fused down all right so now we got that one so all of our A's are done. Next, we're gonna do the B's. B is, is this B? This is B2, where's B1? Here's B1. So again, if this is how B1's gonna set, we need to fuse this, this one and this one. So it's gonna set like this, and we need to fuse this side and this side right here. So it's like this. There's the top. We got to do this side now. You just want to, when you're doing this, you just don't want to get that adhesive on your iron. Just kind of gently iron it and then flip it and iron it good. Okay, so that one's done. All right. Now we have this little guy and it's two and a half long. So this side and this, let's see. How are we gonna do that? Yeah. So. So 
So we're gonna have to do all three sides, this side and this side. We're going to do C, C, C right here. So we won't have to do this side or this side. We just have to do the top and the bottom and the side. So I'm checking just to see how, if I'm getting quarter inches. Oh, pretty doggone fantastic. That's a little bit big one, but not bad. Okay, so our last piece is D. And so that will have to be, um, I don't know why you would have to do when they're buttoned up against each other. So I'm gonna try something and we'll just do this long side. And I think that we can layer them underneath A and B, and then that way we don't even have to worry about doing raw edge on it. All right. Okay. All right, so now she says something about the scallops. And let's see. Oh, here it is. Once you have stitched the wool in place,
Okay, so we're supposed to add the scallops before we stitch everything down. Okay, so let's go ahead and place our pieces. So this is gonna be right here. <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and take off the papers and I'm gonna pin everything first while we until we have everything placed and then I will iron it down. Okay. Okay, so A is going to go up here. This was B, and then this one C,
then we've got B and A, and I turned both of these under, so I'm just gonna butt that up against each other, and I will just do an applique stitch along there. I left this raw, so I'm gonna go ahead and butt that up underneath there just about a quarter of an inch. So that the, this edge is not raw. All raw edges are covered. Now that worked pretty good, people. I would highly suggest doing it like this because um, that was easy. Now then, before I fuse these down, we want to place our scallops. So I'm going to get to my scallop package right here. Get them all out. this off because this one's done okay so this is on the right and this was on, on the right and so we're going to place these five along D This is plum. I don't think it matters how you put it. I'm just taking the wax papers off. This heart goes up here as well. So I think that she wants them underneath there like that. And then over here, we're going to do, um, those are right up next to the, so about right there. And right there. Okay, so now that I have all of this laid out, I'm going to put <clears throat> pins on my wool pieces. Well, I'm going to go ahead and fuse. Let's 
ignore that. I'm gonna go ahead and fuse these pieces. So I'm gonna fuse this one. Oh, I gotta put my wool mat underneath there. You do not, do not iron on your rotary mat. Let me put my wool mat underneath here. See, you make mistakes and you just keep on going. I mean, that really wasn't a mistake, but it was, I should have had everything out first. Okay, so I'm going to just lay it on there and fuse, fuse the heat and bond to the linen. Now this isn't gonna be fusing the wool. So I'm gonna to have to put pins on there, or you can put glue, whatever you would like. Now let me reiterate, this is not how Maggie does it. This is just how I'm gonna do it. I don't like turn needle, and with this all being straight shots, we don't have to, you don't have to do turn needle in my opinion. So again, I'm just going to give it a little shot of heat here. And then now I'm going to go move down and I'm going to fuse these bottom ones. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and place my heart. Okay. I'm gonna finish fusing these.
right. Now let's do this other side here. So mixed media, or mixed, not mixed media, uh, mixed fabric applique is not hard. It's just that you learn to do different techniques, kind of find your own way um, as you go. It makes for a beautifully textured piece. And Maggie is really well known for creating texture and beauty using a variety of, of fabrics and wool and wools. Okay, I want to just make sure that those scallops are there. And then I'll continue fusing this all the way down to the bottom. That turned out really great, people. <laughs> I didn't know how that was going to work because I have either done raw edge or um, nothing at all. Or you just replace things with wool because I don't like to do turn needle. And this makes it look like you have done turn needle and you haven't. Awesome, awesome, awesome. See, you're always learning something new every day. Okay, so those are fused down well enough that we can move it around. All right, so now, We'll place the rest of our wool pieces, and then all we'll have left to do is stitch it down, and that's doing the same sort of applique stitch using the Summer Brown, Coates and Clark, wherever that got to. Summer Brown, Coates and Clark, sorry. Summer Brown, Coates and Clark. That's all we'll have to do after we get this placed. Okay, so. I'm going to start with um, the very the very main design, which I feel like the main thing of the design is the flowers and the pot. So let's get out all those pieces. And then I can get rid of that. Okay, so we'll place our pot first. And I'm going to use a little bit of glue for this, for some of the smaller pieces. Okay, so before you pin anything, you just kind of want to uh, play around a little bit to see how it goes. One thing I'm going to do right away is I'm going to put these little these little centers. Um, you can see that she has the centers with the little dots right at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and use just a touch. You don't have to use much. Oh, too much came out, but oh well. I'm going to take just a little bit of that away. Okay, where's the uh, next one? All right. Okay. Now 
then. I'm paying attention to, my, again, our drawing. Keep that close by so you can look at it. These little wormy guys are the ones that go down here, so I'm gonna put these towards the bottom. And then these thicker guys are the ones that go up here. So let's start, go ahead and start. Okay, so this first one is seven inches long. So I'm gonna get my ruler, my handy dandy little ruler here. And this is seven inches, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut that to size, seven inches. And that's gonna go straight up. You wanna tuck a little bit under your flower mound. Looking at your picture, right? You're looking at your picture. And then the next one is eight inches. So I'm gonna get this one to be eight inches. That's a cut right here. Then we have, these are both seven and a half and seven and a half. These little wormy guys. So that's cut right here. This isn't, this isn't final placement. I'm just messing around. I'm just kind of laying it out and then we'll get final placement in a little bit. Okay, so we have this one. Now we only have one left. Oh, this one's eight inches. Let's make sure that this one's eight inches. So, right there. Okay. All right, and then this one's seven and a half. Did I cut it? No, I did not. Seven and a half. And that one's gonna be right here. So we're gonna have a guy there. Oops. Now you can see we're gonna to have to move this down because this is gonna go off the top. But we're just playing, we're just playing now. So the leaves, we're gonna leave the leaves right here. 
Okay, so one, two, three, four. The first one has four petals. And I'm just going to grab randomly. There's two different colors for these petals, and I'm just going to ran randomly grab. Next one has five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And then the last one has one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now then, since we're getting into, we'll place the leaves later. Since we're getting into over here where the, where the hill in the house is, we need to place this hill in the house. But before we place the hill, we need to do the cutting for it, because I forgot about that. Okay. Well, foodie, I'm going to have to uh, So now we're going to place the house. Whoops, sorry. Now we're going to place the house. So we need to put this down first. And remember, we're referring to our directions here. Sure, no problem. You going now? Yeah, I'm going to go. Okay, well, have a good rest of your day. Thank you. 
Okay, so now we've got the hill placed. I'm gonna go ahead and put some pins in there. Now we're going to make our house. We're going to build our house. I'm, again, I'm following, I'm following my diagram. <clears throat> so this appears that it is roof. And then the side part of our roof. Clip this. Okay. If your roof's not fitting, clip it. All right. Now we're going to do our chimney. When you're in kindergarten and you had felt shapes and you could play with them. <laughs> That's kind of what this is like. Okay. I like that, so I'm gonna go ahead and glue this, these pieces. Um, I'm gonna put just a dot of glue here and a dot of glue here for the grass. I've got it. I'm 
I'll do a dot here, a dot here, a dot here to hold that. And a dot up here. And then I'll do a dot here and one right here. Do a dot. Oh, that's a little bit too much. And then one right here. One right here. One right here. And then one right here. But that's not enough glue really to hold the whole thing and flop it around. So I'm going to go ahead and pin these as well. The larger pieces, not the, not the little guys, because that will hold the little guys. Okay, excellent. Now we're gonna put the large flower over here. Okay, let me take a drink. All right, so on our picture and on our reference photo, they don't have this sticking in anything. It's just a plain, plain flower. And the plain flower is 10 inches long. I know this is longer than 10 inches, so I'm going to clip that. Okay. And the pick the flower is going up close to the scallops. Okay. And then uh, let's move that so I don't burn myself. Okay, so now, uh oh, here it is. Number seven. And then the petals. Now again, let me emphasize that Maggie's pieces are always organic. So you don't have to like be on a light table making sure you have proper placement. You place it generally how it is and make it work for you. You don't have to like freak out. Like for instance, I put these here. I think I need to move them up a little bit. Not that far. I think I'm gonna go ahead and glue them down.
looking great. Okay, when you curve these, when, as you stitch these down, and Maggie has an excellent tutorial by Martindale on Martindale, which is a quilt company where she illustrates how she sews her stems down. I would highly suggest that you go look at that and I will, and since this video is so, no, so long, I'm not gonna show you how she does that. It's the same kind of stitch that we did on here, except it, she goes from one side underneath to the other side, underneath to the other side to catch as she goes up and she will like curve as she goes. I will link that video in the drop down box. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead We got that. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and put my initials, or no, the date. The date goes down here. While I'm on this side, I might as well go ahead and do that.
my our initials, I mean our date, I'll go ahead and place my initials. <clears throat> We're done with this side. Looking good. little glue here. All right, now all we have left to do is lay out our flower vase. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and I'm going, no, I don't need to put glue on this. I'm gonna pin this down. And then we know that this goes here. Okay, now then, looking at my flower, looking at my reference photo again, I'm gonna put it over here. We're going to manipulate these flowers, stems. Okay, this is flower number one. So I need number one's leaves. Number one, number one, number one. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue for it to hold this stem. Okay, so we got number one flower done. Now we're gonna do number two. And this one has four. One, two, three, four.
excellent. All right, now we're gonna do, oh, we gotta do um, number two leaves. Number two, number two. Now we're going to do number three. And she has this one basically straight up, so we'll keep that orientation. cut this a little bit because mine's too long and that's okay because we can I've got plenty of space I've got plenty underneath there and now I'm just trying to get this all to fit there's that and this is number three flower so I'm getting the number three flower leaves As you stitch, remember, as you stitch, you'll manipulate these to hide all the ends underneath the stems and all of that. It's just hard to do that when you're laying it out. to number four flower just working our way around and this is going to be more oriented towards the house 
to fill this space a little bit. four leaf. Excellent. and that's going to go into the hill a little bit. Right there. And this little guy is going to go down into next to the pot. Curve him around sort of like this. Let me get him more under the pot here. Curve him more. Okay. And then we have to place our leaves on this guy. Glue them down.
And there, my friends, is our piece all completed. I'm well, all laid out and ready to sew. So now how you would attack this is that you would sew every edge, raw edge of your stems, your leaves, your flowers, all around here, all around your scallops, your initials, everything. You're going to sew everything down. Okay, and that's how you lay out a, how basically you do a wool applique. The stitch that you're going to use is a whip stitch. Again, I'm going to link that in my drop down box and we will be good to go with that. Um, the next thing that we need to talk about is how do you do your backing? This is the backing that is um, that comes with your piece. And so you will see as I open it up here that it is quite a bit larger than your real piece. And so what you will do is once you have this done, let me move this carefully. You want to make sure that your pieces are all pretty much sewn pinned down or either glued down so that you can take this wherever you go and sew on it. You can sew on it however you want, wherever, if you, as long as you have it, have it with you. Okay, so how you're gonna put the backing on is you are going to leave about an inch on all sides or a, half an inch on all sides you're going to fold it like this and iron it all the way around okay just fold it up to the piece and iron it all the way around then you're going to fold it over like this and then you're going to stitch it iron it all the way around pin it you can use these little cool clippies you can pin it with pins or you can use these binder clips magic clips all the way around and then you sew it in and then there you are done with that in the instructions Maggie says that she um, after she did the binding like this then she did sew around kind of like stitch in the ditch or just like right along the edge going through this layer and this layer so that it would um, so it would hold it because since we're going to put the backing on like this, it would be floppy um, if you didn't do that. So you would want to just generally go around all the applique pieces, um, you know, like just around here, around these, and around the sides of these, the hill. You will have to do just on the outside edge on all of these to hold the, the two pieces together. And that's how you do it. That's it. Thanks so much. I know that this might have been a little bit disjointed because it's hard to show every step of a wool applique in one video, but I wanted to get this out for those of you that were interested. I'll be doing other wool applique videos as I have time that features buttonhole stitch and um, other embroidery stitches, some that aren't as primitive as a, a Maggie piece that make that you might like consider putting embroidery stitches on to make it better or not make it better but to make it more decorative i guess so there we are home and garden is the name of this again it's by maggie bonami this is an exclusive that is available in blackberryprimitives.com run over there and get yourself a kit because it's a it's a beautiful kit this will make a beautiful hearth rug in front of my fireplace and, um, or it can be a wall hanging, or it can, you can use it as a runner on your table, on your kitchen table, or on your coffee table. It's a beautiful, beautiful piece. If you do want to join this, um, you also need to go to the, the wool along, or the stitch along for the wool piece, and that is called Butternut Days Stitching wool projects by maggie bonami so butternut days that's on facebook just google butternut days stitching wool projects by maggie bonami i will have the link to it in the drop down box 
I will have the link to Blackberry Primitives in the drop down, down box. And I will have the link to Maggie's video on how she does her stitching on her stems in the drop down box. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.